What's up, fam? Welcome back to the Well Let's Go podcast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I'm so excited for this conversation today. We actually have Katie Nicole on the podcast. You may have heard her name. It is so powerful, y'all. It's called In Jesus' Name, God of Possible. It's very strong. If you are in your prayer closet and you need something to pray, just pray these words and it will take to the throne. Um, y'all, Katie holds the record for the longest held number one debut single for a female artist on Christian Airplay. This girl song is taken over. Katie also hit top five on the Billboard Emerging Artist uh, chart, while In Jesus' Name, God of Possible has been at number one on the iTunes Christian and Gospel Songs chart virtually every week since it released in January. So it's so crazy to see all the stuff that God's doing in her life. She also just won a Caleb Award for Worship Song of the Year. Uh, and this really all kind of came from her just making a TikTok video. So I can't wait for y'all to hear uh, just about her testimony and the story. This podcast is going to be so good. Stick along for the conversation without further ado cannot wait to have katie on the podcast well thank you so much for having me i'm so excited to be here this is great i remember so i was at the k-love awards and you were there and um Mm -hmm. i hadn't really heard your song yet and i'm sitting there and i'm like what is this song because it kept getting nominated for like every award and then you come out there and you lead and i was like whoa like the place just immediately (laughs) went to worship like Forget mm-hmm. you're at an award show, like, the, like it was just, it was honestly just so powerful. Your song, In Jesus' Name, uh, has just been moving mountains, and I can't wait to talk to you about mm-hmm. that and just so many other things in your life, and of course, you won the award that night, um, and man, you're just on this trajectory God has you on. That's awesome to watch from afar, so mm-hmm. we'll get to that, but before we do, I got to ask you the question I ask everyone who comes on the Will That's Good podcast. Katie, what is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given? The best piece of advice that I've ever been given was when I first started leading worship and uh, my mentor said to me, he said, it doesn't matter what you do when you step onto that platform. It matters where your heart's intentions are at and where your heart Mm -hmm. is when you step up there. And so from then on, I don't step onto any platform without having my heart's intention right, you know, right with God. And yeah. just having a moment with God, you know, having a moment of silence and just like spending that rest with him. And so being able to kind of carry that with me has been one of the biggest blessings. It's good. It's good. So at the Caleb Awards, like I mentioned, I saw you lead. What, what was your intention going out there? What were you thinking about? Because I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge stage. It's a huge moment. What was the backstage moment like for you? You know, it was really quick, I I have to say, like from the I was sitting out in like the audience area. And so then they were like, "Okay, it's time to go. (laughs) And so I was backstage and I actually won the worship song of the year right before I went out to sing. So I was a little bit in shock because I actually wow. I had no idea. And I didn't I didn't expect to to win at all. Like if anything, I thought. Like, if I go home with nothing, I'm just glad to be here. I'm so grateful that God has just put me here. And um, so after that, you know, I, as I was walking up, I was just praying, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit and lead every word that I say. And so, you know, and I was going up there knowing that it was just me and a pianist. So it was like, you know, if I messed up too, it was like, well, there's not a lot to like fall back on here. (laughs) But really, I just, I didn't care. I was like, you know what, God, this is all for you. And yeah. no matter what happens at the end of the day, like, I give the glory to you. And I just want to look at your name. It's good. Well, I think it was so cool because just being there from a, from an outsider perspective. So you just won uh, the Worship Song of the Year. And all the other artists who were up um, nominated were just incredible artists. I mean, these are people who mm-hmm. have just been legends of uh, songwriting yes. and songs that we all know, people that we know so well. And so you would think that maybe one of them would, would win just because they're so known and have done things for so long. And then you won. And it was like, oh, my gosh, this is this is crazy. This is awesome. And then for people yeah. who didn't know you in that moment was like, well, I got to hear this. And it was so cool that you were <laughs> right after. And right after you sang, and it was like, and that's why it won. You know, like, mm. boom. Like, and it was because um, when you walked on that stage, your authority um, 
and declaring what you knew this song would do in people's life was so powerful. And like I said, I didn't mm-hmm. know you before this. I'm just watching. I'm like, this is so strong. Um, so, okay, we're going to get to that. Now everybody kind of knows you for that. But way before we all knew you for this, what, what was your life like? What was your story like? Did you always lead? Did you always sing and write? Um, how did this happen? Yeah, I mean, I've always been singing. I mean, I loved to sing since I was like, Three. I was just always singing a song, um, but I've I've never really like I never thought that I would end up in worship. I never thought that I would end up in Christian music. I grew up Christian, and I loved Christian music, but I never thought that would be me one day. Like that wasn't necessarily where I, you know, I was dreaming of going. So, um, so when I started leading worship, I was 18 years old, and I. Had a, like I said, I had this mentor, and um, he believed in me in a way that like I just I didn't even believe in myself at that moment in time, and was cheering me on no matter what. Like even if I hadn't done Christian music, like he still probably would have been cheering me on just because he was like, I believe in you and I believe in what you're doing, and um, and so, but I I realized very quickly how my songs had changed because Jesus was in them, and. Mm-hmm. I was so grateful because my life had kind of transformed in in that season in a way where I was starting to have a relationship with Jesus. And so being able to write songs about Him and glorify His name just felt like the cherry on top of all of that. And mm-hmm. my, my love for the Lord was just growing. And I yeah. am so grateful that I get to be a worship leader, you know, first and foremost, even before awesome. I write songs. It's awesome. And you, you didn't actually, like, you really didn't think you were going to do this because you actually went to, like, school to be a medical assistant or something, right? So you were like, <laughs> yeah, you love the Lord, but you were even pursuing a different career, which I think is so cool because I think so many people think, like, they have to know, like, the path that they're going to take in their life. But I'm like, you know what? I think yeah. God puts so many desires in our hearts. And I think that um, God yeah. will, you know, He'll establish our steps. He'll make our path straight. But there are some things that you don't know wh- where to go. So you just have to say yes to the next thing. So um, tell yeah. me about just, you know, actually pursuing a career to be a medical assistant and then being like, skirt, I'm actually uh, a songwriter and leading worship. <laughs> You know, I I had a moment where I was like, I want to do something different. I, I was always singing and I was always doing music. So I was just like, I want to do something that has nothing to do with that. Because I felt like there was more to me and more to my abilities in life. And so I went to a trade school to get my certification to be a medical assistant. And the crazy thing is, is that I like genuinely love doing it. So I was kind <laughs> of on that path. And then it wasn't until God just opened this door to music that I was like, okay, I hear you loud and clear. (laughs) I need to walk through that door. And, um, but I am a certified medical assistant, so I am qualified to do some stuff. (laughs) That's awesome. Hey, why not? That's so fun. I love it. It's like, you know, you see these people, um, even like Tom Cruise, okay? Like he's obviously this big actor that does all these things, but he's also like a an actual pilot, you know? And yeah. it's like, I just think it's so cool when people are, like, they had their thing, but they also have, like, all yeah. these other hobbies. Like, I want to be like that. I want to be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I do this. But also, like, I'm kind of doing this and this and this. Like, just because it's fun. And, like, God put so yeah. much in us. So why not mm-hmm. tap into that if you can? Um, I love yeah. it. So what was yeah. what was the door that God opened for you in that moment um, when you were like, okay, like, God's starting to open doors. Like, it's undeniable. Like, I got to walk through it. What was that door? One thing I love doing throughout my week is working out with a few friends. That's just a great way to start my day, especially with friends. Friends make it better. Friends make the mornings need, seem not so hard. It's actually something I look forward to. And not only is it important for me to start moving, but also I care a lot about what I put in my body too. And that's why I love Athletic Greens because it's one tasty drink that offers you everything you need. 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. And y'all, I mean, one scoop, that's it. Drink it and, and you got it, right? I've never been 
been one that loves taking a lot of pills to get the nutrients I need, uh, which is why Athletic Greens makes it so easy. Athletic Greens gives you the one thing with all of the best things, um, and who doesn't love simplifying a path for nutrition? The ingredients in one scoop of AG1 work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, support energy and focus, and helps with your gut and digestion system, and supports a healthy immune system. So you can basically replace a bunch of products or pills with one healthy, delicious drink. And not only do I love this product, and I love how uh, great and smooth it is, but Christian loves AG1 too. And after he tried it, he got his parents hooked on it. So if you're looking to maintain your health, keep up with energy levels, and live a healthy lifestyle, AG is perfect for you. Look no further, my friend. And if you're worried uh, it's not lifestyle friendly, I have good news for you. It is. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 works perfect for you. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash woe today. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash woe to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. It was kind of multiple doors, but I would say the one that kind of stuck out to me was just the one to leading worship and that opportunity I had in a church. And cool. that opportunity kept growing too. I started leading for more ministries and um, I got to the place where I was leading for every ministry at my church. And wow. so I, <laughs> I just felt so called to that every time I would step onto the worship platform and I would, you know, just, I'd be leading a congregation. I realized more and more how much I didn't want to make it about me. Cool. And I also consider myself to be kind of an introverted person too. So I find my job to be a little weird at times <laughs> because I'm like, I don't know if I like all this attention, but I'm grateful that like I get to be around all of these people and I get right. to share the good news of the gospel. And so I think when you come in with that heart of worship, you're coming from a place of like surrendering yourself hmm. and just allowing God to speak through you. That's awesome. That's so good. So tell me a little bit about your testimony. I know you were born with a very, very rare thing. I think like one in 10,000 babies are born with. Um, what What's your story there? Yeah. So I was born with congenital scoliosis, which okay. scoliosis itself is quite common. A lot of people have scoliosis, but this type is rare and very progressive. And so from an early age, there was kind of all of these odds stacked up against me. And there were a lot of unknowns as well. Um, even doctors were saying like, she might, might not be able to walk at some point if this mm -hmm. progresses to the place that we're afraid it might. Wow. Um, and I am so grateful because I lived a very normal childhood. I got to be climbing on the monkey bars and mm -hmm. doing backflips. You know, I was in tumbling. I'm really small. I'm five feet tall. Oh, wow. So, Tumbling was my thing because I was really agile and like small and I could like flip really high. So it was like, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so that was my passion for a short season of life when I was little. But um, so I am grateful for that. But I'm also grateful that just God c gave me this strength to just keep going because I feel like my life could have been very different had I not had this kind of like strong willed like personality yeah. to just keep going. And even if the, even if those odds were stacked up against me. Yeah. And so when I was 14 years old, I was told I was going to need to have metal rods and screws placed into my spine in order to straighten it out oh. because it was starting to put pressure on my lungs and on my heart. Wow. And that was scary because I had no idea what was going to happen to me on the other side of that. Like wow. I had no idea. And um, right before that, I was trying out for cheerleading and they said, you can't try out for cheerleading because like medically you're not cleared to do so. Wow. And so... Um, that was so sad for me because, you know, a, a dream I had over here was like kind of crushed <laughs> through yeah. that experience. But you know what? God has other plans. And I've just seen him come through time and time again with how much greater his plan is than mine. Yeah. And so when I came out on the other side of the surgery, I unfortunately, I came out in excruciating pain hmm. and not like, not just like physical pain, but mm. mental pain as well. I was dealing wow. with severe anxiety and severe depression to the point where I couldn't move. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. Like it wow. was so hard for me. Eventually I had to pull myself out of like public school or like my parents had to pull me out of public wow. school. And I went to online school because I just couldn't sit in a classroom anymore. Wow. And so I missed out on a lot of formative years of my life because this lasted for three years. Oh my gosh. And, and so, um, I got to a place where I was defeated. I was hopeless. 
I was crying out to God in a way that not blaming him, but just being upset that my situation was the way that it was. And also just being like, why me? Like, why did all of those other people who had the surgery come out and they're fine? Like they got to go back to their normal life. Was that not expected when you went into the surgery? They, you didn't know you were going to have the pain that you had. The, obviously, you can't prepare for anxiety and depression, but that was pretty, no. wow, wow. Yeah, well, I mean, even then, like, they did say it'll take about a year to fully recover. Right. And there will be post-surgical depression. Like, that just kind of comes with the amount of anesthesia that I had during mm. the surgery. I think the surgery lasted about seven hours, seven wow. or eight hours. And so, like, that's a, a huge change. Yeah. Your body goes through, like, trauma because of yeah. that. And so right. my body went through a lot of trauma. But the thing is, is that by a year, you should start to go back to normal. Like, mm. you should start to feel like yourself again. I never went back to feeling like myself again. If anything, I felt like a shell of who I once was. Hmm. And I reached a place where I just wanted to give up. And I said, God, I... I don't want to do this anymore. And I picked up a bottle of pills sitting on my dresser. I looked mm. down at it and I said, it would be that easy. But I took it to the bathroom and it just poured out all over the floor. It fell out of my hands and onto the floor. And when I saw that, I picked up every pill and I threw it in the trash can because I just felt the Lord saying to me, he wasn't done yet. And wow. in that moment, <laughs> if I hadn't felt that, if I hadn't felt the Lord saying to me, he wasn't finished, I don't know if I would be here today. I don't know if I would be doing what I'm doing today. And um, so after that experience, it was probably another year of just the hardest seasons of my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I was about 17 or 16 years old when that happened. And, you know, I mean, you're already in a place of like, oh, I'm about to graduate high school. Like what's about to happen to my life, you know? you know, I'm gonna have to go out and, you know, be an adult and do all of that stuff too. So it just, it scared me because at that point I like, I didn't even know what it meant to be an adult. I didn't even know what it was going to look like if I was going to ever be functional because I could barely move. Wow. And so at my last appointment, um, basically where they were like, we have one more option for you or nothing else. And please don't come back. <laughs> like, wow. cause we don't have anything else to offer you. Um, but my surgeon said to me, he was like, we can remove the metal rods and screws from your spine. And that's riskier than leaving them in. So it's up to you. And I said, take everything out. I don't know if I'm going to make it to tomorrow. Wow. And so they, they went in and they removed everything from my spine. And that was not without like a lot of fear. There was a lot of fear in my heart because I was like, I don't know if this is what God wants for me, but at the same time, I said, no, there's a peace. There's a peace in all of this because God is going to do something. And I've known that since that day where mm. I, I just wanted to be done. When I wanted to give up, God showed me that there was something else on the other side of this. And so when I came out of that surgery, I mean, I'm telling you, there was not a single window in that ICU, but I saw the light again for the first time. Wow. And it was as if every ne negative emotion, every dark season had just parted in front of me. Wow. And I'd never seen anything like it before in my life. And it wasn't like literally I was seeing like light, but it was, it was like the world had changed for me. Wow. And I knew that. And wow. I was out of the hospital in like five days, um, which compare that to the first time I was in the hospital for like two and a half weeks. So wow. crazy how that just the change that there wow. already was. Um, and so when I came out on the other side of this, I realized so quickly I had a purpose. And that purpose has nothing to do with singing the songs I sing. That purpose has nothing to do with standing on a stage. Yeah. It has all to do with living my life wholeheartedly for Jesus wow. and giving it back to Him. Um, because honestly, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't mm. for Jesus. Like that's wow. the only reason I, I can say that I, I wow. live. You know, like I'm living and thriving because Truly. Jesus. Wow. And, um, and so it was about a month or two after that, I started writing Christian music. Wow. So, Friend, crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that, what a testimony. That is crazy. 
Well, first off, I'm so sorry you went through that that period of life. Um, I know so many girls who are listening to this are are there right now, you know, in that mm. that fog, that depression, that anxiety, and yeah. just huge compassion to where all of you guys are. And, mm-hmm. you know, I hope that you can feel that nearness of Jesus. And if you can't mm. feel it, don't trust in your feelings. Trust in the truth that God is there, mm-hmm. that He is with you, that He will yeah. uphold you, because that's what His Word says. And there have been times in my life where, man, I mean, I felt that wave of depression and that wave of anxiety. And in that moment, like sometimes you don't feel like God is near. And in those moments, that's when you have to speak the name of Jesus uh, (laughs) over your situation and believe that, you know, he is who he says he is because he's faithful to himself. He's faithful to his people. So I just, man, what a, what a testimony. So a couple months go by, you start writing the songs that we're, we're singing now. Uh, when did In Jesus' Name, when did that get written? How did that get written? Because that song, I mean, obviously it's so powerful. It's gone like around the world. So how, how was that for you and how did that get on paper? Friends, today I want to tell you about one of my favorite universities ever, Liberty University. Fan the flames, baby. They have a mission of training champions for Christ, which is the foundation of everything they do. I have a lot of family who went there. I myself even took classes from Liberty, and I love taking the online classes from Liberty, and um, I know you will too. With more than 450 online degrees to choose from, you are bound to find a field where you can turn your passions into a career. Most classes are 100% online and are held in eight-week subterm with no set login times, which is great for um, trying to pursue an education. If you're a really busy person, it can kind of suit your needs. Plus, Liberty offers multiple scholarships and discounts to help you achieve your dream at a price that you can afford. All of this while learning from skilled professors and forming relationships with other students around the globe so you can fan the flame too, my friend. If you're looking to take classes in person, they have a gorgeous 7,000 plus acre campus filled with just some incredible people and incredible student-led clubs, sports teams, and other areas that you can get involved in. A few of my siblings attended Liberty in person, and we love to visit them because it was just absolutely beautiful. So whether you are looking for uh, somewhere to attend online or in person, Liberty has hundreds of options for you to pick from for your degree and the most helpful professors and advisors to get you there. So start your future today and go to liberty.edu slash Sadie. And because you are a Whoa That's Good podcast listener, you're actually going to get your application fee waived if you decide Liberty is the place for you. So friend, don't wait any longer. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get started on your future today. That song actually happened, it would have been three years after that surgery. So wow. it was it was a long time after, but I would honestly say the song has just been written over time. I would say it's that good. it wasn't just that one moment in the writing room. It yeah. was a life's worth of just prayer and yeah I wrote that song with two other writers and when we were kind of talking about what did we want to do for that day we all kind of looked at each other and was we're like there's so much power in prayer we need to pray over the people because that's what we need right now and I mean especially in just a broken world like there's so many things that I, I want to pray for. And I was like, we really just need like a very broad <laughs> spectrum of things to be praying for. And um, I, I wrote the song, but it was co- a completely different song at that time. It was called God of Possible. Hmm. And I went home and I filmed a TikTok video of the bridge of that song, which was that I pray for your healing, the circumstances would change. All of that portion of the song was the bridge. And so once I posted that, I actually prayed over the video before posting it. And like, I never do that. There's like, I didn't, I mean, I never saw a reason to do it before, but I mean, now there's so many reasons to do it because it's just like, it's in God's hands. It's not in my hands. And so I prayed over the video and I was just like, Lord, just reach one person with this because I feel like there's something powerful in it. Hmm. And I, I posted it and I walked away for a few hours and when I came back, it was at a million views. Like, wow. it was so quick. It was so quick. And it blew me away because, you know, when I think of Ephesians 3.20, I think of, you know, in life, like, his plan is greater than ours. But in this moment, I was like, wow, you just went so abundantly more than I could have asked, I could have asked you to do or 
ever thought in my wildest dreams or imagined. Like, it's just so wow. incredibly cool to see how God can move through sometimes what we think is so small and he just turns it into something mighty. Um, wow. But after that, I I was actually signed to a record label at the time. And so I went back to my record label and I was like, guys, look at this. <laughs> like, wow. look at look at these people and how they're they're resonating with this song. And you know, it's impacting their life in a way that honestly is nothing I could have ever done. It's, it's all God. Like, look at this. And, um, immediately they were just like, well, go finish the song because the original song was not where it was supposed to be. And, and I, I didn't feel peace in my heart about just going and releasing a song that I didn't feel like it was done. And so I went back in and honestly, I can say every lyric I wrote was an encounter with the Lord. Wow. And it was a lot of really hard moments that I had in my life. And so, especially when I was writing the verses of the song, I looked at the song as a whole and I was like, man, that was what God was speaking over me, like mm-hmm. in my, my hardest seasons. And now I get wow. to speak that over others. And I wow. actually went back into, I write in a prayer journal. That's like one of my favorite things to do. And it's just a way of, I've, I've been able to have an intimate relationship with Jesus and just it's so sweet because I, I get to spend so much time with him. But I went back into one of my prayer journals and I realized so quickly I, I highlighted the lyrics of the song. It was I pray for my healing. I was wow. praying for circumstances to change. I was praying wow. for the fear inside to flee. Like all of the That's words of crazy. the song. So they were they were words that I was praying over myself in different seasons of my life. Like it wasn't just wow. one season, it was multiple seasons. And it is now a prayer I get to pray over other people. And goodness gracious, is that a gift? And that I'm is so the grateful. coolest thing. That's the coolest thing. Man, that's so awesome. Uh, people think, you know, for people who write books or sing songs that like, yeah. oh, these people have figured it out. And it's like, no, the people that are writing the books, people that are singing the songs are the ones that are going through it. Like they're going through it. Like there's yeah. a reason you get to the place where you even know to say those things because you're yeah. in desperate need of God to be that for you. And your life. And man, it's just so cool that you get to use that gift and sing it over other people's lives. Do you remember like the first time, where was the first place you were at when people sang your song? Like when you were in the room, you know, like when you were leading and people <laughs> sang it with you, when, when, when did that happen? What was that moment like? Yeah, no, I think the first, first experience of that was actually a women's conference I did. Hmm. And it was crazy to me because I walked in, like this was literally the first show I played after the song kind of wow. took off and they knew the words. Oh, that's so like, cool. They knew it word for word and you could hear them. Like it was so loud and it was beautiful. Wow. And honestly, one of my favorite sounds is hearing God's people come together and worship together. And so hearing that was just, that was a gift in itself. And I couldn't believe my song like the song that I had written again out of some of the darkest moments in my life was now something that like other people were praying over their own life and and they were fighting battles by singing this song like that's crazy to me it's crazy it's so good so for you you know you've stepped into this position where you are known by a lot of people now your your video did go viral on tiktok it you've hit number one in places that people haven't hit number one as fast as you did i mean that's pretty <laughs> impressive and crazy you uh i know you do stuff on youtube you have instagram you have, you're at social mm-hmm. media so people know you and you're an introvert which sometimes i cannot <laughs> uh sometimes i cannot uh go so well together in the sense of you might be like oh, okay why does everybody know what it looks like why does everybody know and I just remember for me like whenever my family had a tv show and I got to be known um I'm not an yeah. introvert and that still freaked me out I'm, I'm actually mm. a very extroverted person but I was like oh I don't know if I like that everybody knows what I look like yeah. or I don't know that I like that people know me and I don't know them or people come up to me mm. and they're like Sadie and they know everything about my life and I'm like I have a lot of catching up to do with you because I don't even know your name yet. Um, And so I I, I know that can be a weird feeling. How has it been just stepping into fame, if you will? Um, What do you feel like are some of the things that you've seen that maybe, because I think people have this perspective of fame, thinking that like fame would change everything 
for them. But I don't think mm. fame really does that. I mean, I think it just, yeah, no. it changes things in the sense that people know your stuff, but it doesn't change who you are, you know? Um, yeah. It, what have you realized about fame that maybe you didn't know before? It's kind of a loaded question. That is, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of a hard question to answer, too, because I've never really felt famous even mm-hmm. in this time like I, I know that people know who I am but there's, there's just this weird connotation with that word yeah. famous like and how that kind of like you said like people will see you in a way that they're like oh she's gonna change now and yep. like she it's gone to her head yeah but truly I'm the same person I was before any of this happened yeah and I think the biggest thing I've learned is that, like, I don't want people to idolize me in any sort of sense. Yeah. yeah. I want people to look past my flesh and bone and see straight to Jesus. Yeah. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't really have a lot to offer in my human nature. I promise that. Yeah. And so I do what I can to strive towards Jesus every day. And I mm-hmm. hope that that's what people see in me. And yeah. they don't they don't see some sort of like distor- distorted version of me because I'm famous and yeah. I put that in quotes because it's not to me that's like yeah. that's putting us on a pedestal that's putting like yeah. us on this like level that we're not even at we're all yeah. the same like we're all it's equal good. and I want I want people to know that like we're at we're the same we're, we're yeah. the same like my life my job looks different my my job looks different. That's what it is. That's so good. I love that. Mr. Rogers uh, has a quote. He says, fame is just a four-letter word, like tape Mm -hmm. or Zoom or face or pain, but ultimately it matters what you do with it. And that's one of my Mm -hmm. favorite quotes because it's so true. Fame is no different than any other word. You know, being famous doesn't make you different than any other person. Um, It's what you do with it that actually matters. And and I feel the same Mm way. Uh, I think I wanted you to talk about that because there are so many people right now listening to this who desperately want to get TikTok famous, who desperately (laughs) want what happened to you to happen to them. And I want them to realize that that is great if that happens. And if God (laughs) wants your message and your TikTok to get out, he will. Or if you do something of great talent or that's really funny, it will get out maybe. Um, But, you know, but at the end of the day, that will not change who you are. At the end of the day, that will not give you the desires of your soul. That is um, (laughs) an exciting thing to happen, but that is not everything. And I just want people to realize like it's, it's having the true foundation of just knowing that you are loved by the God of the universe, that you are seen by the great I am, that you have a purpose for your life. Like that is what matters. That is what, you know, we have to be anchored to. Not the fact that our last video went viral or this one got more likes than that one or, oh my gosh, you got a blue check mark. It's like, that's not going to do it for you. You know, at the end of the day, that's just not going to do it for you. And so I love hearing you say, you know, I have, I have gotten those things, but like, we're the same. And, um, man, I think culture, because we don't treat famous people the same, because we do idolize famous people. Mm -hmm. It's gotten us in kind of a wacky situation because it's just never how, uh, I think we were intended to live. We were never intended to be worshiped. We were intended to worship. Um, um, and so I think whenever you get that mixed up, things go really wrong. Um, mm-hmm. I love your, your life clearly just points to Jesus and everything that, that you do. You have another song called Jesus changed my life. Um, <laughs> and I mean, I just love that everything's like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's like, if, if you're not hearing this message, like Katie, Nicole is all about Jesus. Um, for the person listening who is like, okay, this is really cool. She's all about Jesus. Jesus is a part of my life. I go to church on Sunday. How do you go from like, okay, I go to church on Sunday. I know of Jesus to like everything I am, everything I do is for Jesus. Do you remember that Mm. shift in your own life when that happened? You know, I think I really got to know Jesus when I was 17 because as I wanted to give up on life and on this world, I realized that there was something greater than I was. And Mm. I needed to start looking in that direction because I was looking towards all of the wrong things that were only going to destroy me in the end. And like Jesus changed my life. That song is quite literally me talking about all the places I ran to before I ran to Jesus and how I'm probably, I felt like I was the last person he would want to see, but truly that's not how it works. He's standing there with open arms, just so ready to embrace you. 
and ready to meet you where you are. So come to him broken. Come to right. him with all of the pain, all of the mess, because that's what he wants. He wants to love you. Yep. And I think the moment that I really realized, okay, Jesus wants to love me as I am, was after that second surgery when I came out and I was, I was like, you know what? Now I have a purpose because I, I was given my life back and life is Jesus. So if I get to be alive, mm-hmm. then I should be living for Jesus. <laughs> and, you know, mm-hmm. it's not, it's a day to day, like you're, you're messing up every single day still. Like I mess, I literally am a mm-hmm. human being. I'm falling short of the glory of God every single day. And yet at the same time, I'm striving to be like Jesus. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's, it's the heart's intentions. I go back to that, that quote, that, that um, advice I was given. Like, it's about your heart's intentions. You know, the, the check your yeah. heart quote is also like a really good one because I genuinely have to check my heart every once in a while where I'm just like, okay, back to reality. Well, and I think too, you know, mm-hmm. there are so many aspects of being a Christian where people are like, oh, it's easier for you because you're a Christian. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's harder for me because the devil has something to chase after. The devil has something that is mm-hmm. to, to him. It's like, I better stop you because I don't, I don't yeah. like this Jesus guy, you know, and, and I love yeah. this Jesus guy. And because my heart's mm-hmm. after Jesus, the devil's after me. So mm-hmm. my life is going to be difficult. But Get behind I, me. Yep. But like at the end of the day, you know, again, it's about where, where you're looking to, where, where does your help come from? Yeah. You know, in the hardest of moments, but also in, in the joy of life, who are you looking to? Are you celebrating with Jesus? Mm-hmm. You know, h- how, how do you mm-hmm. live your life and what are your intentions in mm-hmm. life? And also it's what good. is the end goal? What is the end goal? Cause that's what we're looking towards is the end goal. Mm-hmm. And it's eternity. It's good, friend. Well, look, I don't know how else to end that, but right there. I mean, friend, if you're listening to this and you've been kind of um, wavering on the fence of, you know, am I all in? Am I just kind of doing this for a show? Am I doing this for, from afar? Am I wondering? I hope that this can help lead you to that full send of I'm all in, Jesus. Whatever you have for my mm-hmm. life. Uh, here I am, send me, use me, um, because, man, that, that moment will change your whole life for the best way. Um, will yeah. it be easy? No. But will God be with you? Yes. And see, that's the difference, and that's that's the power. You know, you'll have an angel army fighting with you, fighting for you. You're not alone in it. And so, Katie, thank you for just, thank you for, you know, living your life loudly for Jesus. A little introvert, five-foot introvert, living her life loudly for Jesus. Um, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful to have you on the podcast. And, man, God bless you and all the things that you're doing. If you haven't heard Katie's music, go check it out. I'm sure anywhere that music is played. And we're grateful for you, Katie. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. Aw, thank you so much for having me. (laughs) 